I have Cindy. I got me, myself, and I. So the guy in the end. So I found out. I'm Beyonce. Mm -hmm. Be no, I'm Beyonce. Okay. Beyonce. Beyonce? Brianna. <laughs> Cinderella OG, welcome back to my channel. And I'm so sorry, my voice is like going away. Like, you know, guys, I sound like a man. <laughs> you should have gone before you started. Anyways, thank you guys for coming back to my channel and watching. Today I am here with the one and only Anthony Mweke, who is. Mweke who is in medical school right now and he is pursuing a career in orthopedic surgery and today Anthony is going to ask some questions that you guys have asked me pertaining to medical school and being a doctor and the process and stuff like that I know I sounded kind of weird when I said that guys but um, he's going to answer your questions that you guys have asked me and I'm going to ask him as we did in the other video and such and such so Anthony are you ready? I mean, I'm ready. I just wanted to, you know what I'm saying, add a little correction, you know. I mean, I'm pursuing to be orthopedic surgeon, but you know, there's a process, so the grind. But I'm still very open to everything, but that's the optimum of my pursuit. But that's not the definite of what I might be, you know what I'm saying? So, I just want to clarify that. That's Anthony for I'm still in school. So, Anthony, What's up? what school did you go to? What was your major? And why did you pick that major? Um, so, you know, as far as school, you're talking about college, right? Mm -hmm, undergraduate. Okay, so outside of, um, outside of uh, high school, first I went to uh, community college, you know, my first year. Um, and at Brookhaven Community College here, Palmer's Branch. Um, the reason why I did that route was because, you know, I, I didn't take my football scholarship. So I was like, you know what, let me just go ahead and stay home, worked. Um, and that's when initially I was aspiring to go into a pharmacy school. So I was taking pre-rate classes in hopes of transferring to U of H. I did that for a year that I transferred to U of H. Um, and when I was at U of H, I started to pursue the um, pre-farm program there. Um, then something happened, you know, um, along the, the whole time, I always had, you know, med school in mind, but you know, I just had this process. Maybe I go to pharmacy school, start working at an early age, possibly get married young. You know, and then possibly, you know, go into medical school later on and stuff like that. Then, um, it was one summer, taking a chemistry class, um, and we were doing the titration stuff, and this lady was like, hey, you got steady hands. And, like, her talking to me just kind of, like, provoked that internal, I feel like, at that moment, it was, like, reassuring. I've been hearing this all through, so I was like, you know what? I was driving home, I told my parents, I was like, you know what? I think I'm just going to go ahead and shoot straight for my biology. Um, degree, and then uh, that's when I, I changed that when I was at U of H. Finished the bio degree, uh, four years, minored in, um, minored in, oh, you went to U of H? Oh, nice. Go Cougs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I minored in health, and along with the biology degree, so that was, uh, that was the transition. Um, and I graduated 2012 from the University of Houston. Go Cougs, we'll see. So why did you choose medicine? Why did I choose medicine? Um, you know, somebody had asked me this question earlier, so, you know, I think it's great because now I can kind of expand and put this on video. Um, my journey or my aspiration of being a, becoming a doctor is probably not the typical general, oh, I had, my parents gave me a stethoscope, but my dad was a doctor, my mom was a doctor. Um, I feel like my ambition to medicine is... Um, something deeper in turn as far as like when it comes to my personality and what I bring to the table as far as like my ability to help people. Um, I love a challenge. You know, after sports, I was like, what's the next thing? Mental challenge. Um, the reason why I chose to do medicine was because of the fact of, you know, I always think about my future, securing the best, you know, uh, what's the thing that's going to secure me the best as far as like what's going to make me develop the, the best and, and also be able to reach out to people. Um, medicine allows you to meet somebody random every day. Not only on the fact that you're trying to treat them, you give you give an opportunity to breathe life to them through conversation. You know, not only you, you trying to prescribe a drug, but somebody's coming through telling you their life. And what's a better job than when you go to meet genuine people who are going to walk in there and you can kind of actually get to, to the core with them and open an encounter. And I feel like the field of medicine is going to give me that longevity as far as like 
my social as you know you know my social aspect of myself and also the ultimate goal which is to allow somebody else to get back out there um i took my acl in high school when i was playing football um um my orthopedic surgeon you know i remember that day you know i was crying i was like man maybe i'm not gonna keep playing football again but he promised me that you know after this you know the surgery we have you know, he gave me that, he, he breathed life into me. You know, I remember that day, you know, in the training room, he told me the, he told me the, my situation was like, yeah, you told your ACL. I didn't know what ACL was, but those, those, those were the things that, you know, I use today to inspire me and say, that's one of my reasons to be in the doctor. Also being, you know, first, gener you know, first generation here in the U.S., born in Nigeria, um, going home and seeing what's out there at home, I'm thinking further, you know, what I'm going to do for back home. and. You know, a lot of people in the village um, are having issues where, where it's cataracts or high blood pressure or the food that they eat. No one is actually giving them medical aid. And I feel like what I'm doing is a sacrifice to bless others, which is why ultimately I want to be a medical doctor. What characteristics should one look for in an undergraduate school when their main goal is med school? Oh, for the, what characteristic about the school? For you know, undergraduate school. For undergrad school. school. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, one thing I'll tell people, unless you know for sure, like from high school, you know that medicine is definitely your ultimate goal. Um, then you want to you want to make sure that you go to a program that has a good uh, pre med. Um, why? It's because unique programs is gonna is gonna um, challenge your critical skill, critical thinking skill, because the exams that you have to take to get in medical school is gonna need you to have those skills. Um, one can go to a school and never know how to enhance those skills, but you need a program that's going to put you on track. It's going to tell you about the uh, standardized exam that you have to take way before you finish in so you can be able to start shaping your minds towards that. Um, for somebody that's you know, kind of iffy and want to test the water, you know, I think it's, a, you give, it's, a, it's good to just go to a college where you know you can have fun in college. Right? The reason why I say that is because you do need to exhaust some of that. You need to ask some questions when you're in college because this is not a field that you just kind of catapult yourself into because the longevity is going to, is very, very, uh, um, the miles you're going to put on yourself is long and you need to have a lot of passion. You need to have a solid oil in you that's going to take you the whole way, you know what I mean? Because if you do embark on this, say that you just are, you know, intelligent and you're able to get in, intelligence is not, is not what's going to sustain you. Um, medical school is all about the passion. It's about the day in, day out, about the passion. So you need a, you need a school that's going to put that fire on your tail so that when you do get in medical school, you be able to step up as opposed to like feeling like, oh my gosh, the weight is so much. So, you know, every level you're going to step up anyway, but you need something that's going to really, really, really sharpen your, you know, uh, intellect before you get into med school. Pre-med is direction, not a major. Yeah, pre-med is direction, not a major. You could actually major in whatever. Um, before, so it's good to be versatile. Um, a lot of stuff will prepare you very well because you know pre med is going to make you, you know, it's, I mean, it just depends. Make sure you get into it, socialize. You need to enhance yourself. Being a doctor is not about just the books. It's about your skills with the, with people. Like you can have all that knowledge up here, but if you can't relate to somebody uh, uh, adequately, they don't know what you just said. You know, so you need to develop that way of you know um, having a good, good social skill. What are the general habits that an undergraduate student should practice while um, preparing for medical school? Um, you know, just to be just to be real, as far as like you don't have any habits, you don't know coming into college, you don't know um, what you need to have. But one thing I can say from where I'm at right now, if I was watching somebody um, that is aspiring uh, to be a medical doctor. Um, you know, you can't say that person will have those. Like, you just pretty, you kind of raw in, in undergrad. So, you know, one thing I'll say is just have an edge. You know, one thing I'll say is, you know, make set goals and meet those goals. You know, if any habit, if you set a goal and say, this is what I want to get out of this semester, this term, um, meet those goals. If you want to, if you have, if you want, if you have things you need to get done before you go, you know, to a party, get those things done. Um, you know, procrastination, everybody has that, you know, as a weakness, but what gets people, you know, ahead is those people that actually find a way to discipline themselves, you know, it's still a struggle for a lot of people, even people in medical school still procrastinate to a certain extent, just because you can't sit there all day unless you're taking some Adderall or something like that, but, you know, just to drive yourself to push, you know, that's one of the characteristics I'll say, 
that you know one should have. Um, and then again, depending on who you are, if you already come in with a sound, sound discipline, then continue. But college is the time where you do polish yourself. So you come in, in raw and you want to come out a good product. That's one of the things I'll say. Make sure that you set goals and try to meet those goals. Don't set goals and you know and and, and, and you know accumulate goals that you don't meet because the end of the day is gonna make you less confident in yourself. Um, and it's gonna make you behind. So work on your confidence, um, you know, work on goal achieving and you know maintain know who you are. You know, I think understanding where you at at baseline, self-study is the one of the best things you can you can you can find out, you know, while you're in college. Ability to analyze yourself and say, I'm at this point, this is the point I wanna get to. Sometimes people don't know where they're at, so they can't really know where they're gonna get to or how much they need to put in to get to it. So know your baseline, you know, coming out of college, going into college, engage and say, okay, I've made this much leap. So this is the same things I've done in college. Hopefully I can repeat the same thing even better when I get to the next level. So those are, so be able to analyze yourself, be honest with yourself, have confidence, and be able to set goals and meet those goals. Those are characteristics um, that I, I think will make one a great candidate um, to having uh, become a physician or whatever you want to go into post undergrad and having a good uh, longevity in that. One thing I add is find your zone, find your zone. You know, like this is this is my this is my niche. You know, what I mean, this is why this is why I'm able to be a lion. You feel me? This is the jungle I created. I know all. I know everything in here. There are cards purposes. everywhere. You know, so so so, um, so y'all can't see it, but so, there are cards literally. This everywhere. is where we become successful. This saying what you see. Generally speaking, what strategies helped you succeed with the MCAT? Um, that's, I like that question because I don't really have any strategies. You know, my thing with the MCAT. <laughs> My thing with the MCAT was like this. I took the MCAT four times. And I said, I'm about to take the fifth time. Um, when I was studying for the MCAT, you know, I always felt great going into it. You know, I felt like I got the books I needed to do. I set myself down, studied. I couldn't quite figure out what the issue was. Because on the test day, getting the scores back, um, and then it just didn't look like what I thought it would be. Um, so um, I guess one thing I'll say, and I'll be honest with myself, um, you know, it's probably the critical thinking aspect of it. I mean, I'm a critical thinker, but for me to, you know, admit that about that exam, I'll just say now that it's probably something about that particular exam I didn't even quite develop. Um, obviously, when I do take practice, when I was taking practice exams, I was getting good scores, but on the day of, so I don't know if it was a mixture of text anxiety or just, you know, rushing it, missing, you know, the, the tricks that they like to throw in, but I'll say, I'll say since I've been an undergrad, I mean been in medical school, um, I went in knowing that whatever that was a part of my brain that I needed to enhance and I've done extremely well since I've been in um, and now I mean I, I, I go into exam confident. I, I think number one thing one should do to be successful in the MCAT or any exam you do take is take a lot of practice tests. Um, if you know there's a condition that you need to be in, test yourself under that con condition and see you present results in that condition because if you just kind of like go through it the day of it's the day to perform so somebody can practice for basketball game a whole week and on the game day you just choke you know so that's why you have to anything i say just put in the work do a lot of questions um you know test yourself in the test uh environment and you know just be confident go in there and you should be able to you know get a good result but the only way to succeed on these exams you got to sit down and study all the different variation ways they can ask you a question and because they like to trick you you know they want to see who's the smartest thinkers you know some of it is not trying to trick you but for you to set yourself up for you gotta catch the tricks um so that's my advice about the MCAT but start early definitely start early and get familiar with the exam that's the biggest thing familiarity about an exam is the best thing you can do because when you start studying you're already familiar with the exam you already know where it's pick up study from you don't want to get too deep in the exam and realize oh snap I, I actually don't even know what I'm studying because you don't quite understand the nature of the exam what exactly they wanted you to get out of um, that process what are your thoughts on being underrepresented uh, being an underrepresented minority in medicine my thoughts about being an underrepresented minority in medicine um I'm a different type of person to kind of like ask, you know, ask this question because my, my opinion is like this. Um, I mean, at the end of the day, more is probably expected of you, right? 
first of all, you probably the few. And that's that's just what it looked like. You know what I mean? You just the few. Um, you know, and then that also goes to, you know, acceptances. You know, it's harder for, you know, us to get in. You know, at the end of the day, you know, it's just harder for us to get in. Um, although it looked like there's a minimum that, you know, if you this, you get in, but, you know, anyway. So as a minority, me, I don't look at myself as a minority. I see myself as equal with everybody else. Um, but I'll tell you one thing though. I know for sure in school, you know, it gives you a little edge. Why? Because, you know, they don't expect you to be that brilliant. You know, they know you're smart, but they don't want you to be smarter than them. You get what I'm saying? So with that being said, not only do you grind, you know, just to make sure that you cover yourself well, especially when you ask to present, internally, you ask yourself, you want to be the best you want to be. You know, one of my things that, you know, provoke, one thing that provoked me is that, you know, my, my time being out there in Grenada, SGU, um, I knew that there was a lot of use back here in Dallas, and especially in this area, you know, in the U.S. in general. I always kept that, um, you know, in, in, in front of, you know, in, in my mind as far as like, you know, when I'm grinding, I'm doing this for those people that, you know, don't really have that belief that they can get get that far, you know, and and I see myself as, you know, not only a black man, I'm, I'm, a, I'm an African, I'm Nigerian. Um, so for us, this is not new, you understand? So we can, we don't, we, we expect it to be excellent, you know, so we're not a minority. We actually, when you actually focus on just us, not the not to take people when you look at us, Nigerians, Africans in general are doing excellent. So we actually not a minority when it comes to education and seeing. But as a black man in general, you know, there's probably not a lot of black physicians, especially males. Alright guys, thank you so much for watching. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you have any other questions, let me know so I can let Anthony know and he'll let me know and I'll let you know. Cool. And Anthony, do you have any other things? Well, I'll say, um, you know, I, I always do motivation affirmations, daily affirmations, and you can find me on my Instagram at uh, Doctor's Message. Um, that's my motivation, and then I'm gonna have my general Instagram, Mr. Un Mr. Underscore One Nation Underscore MD. One Nation is a nonprofit organization that still in portfolio working on, um, but that's why I have that name. So you can reach me in those two places, or if you got anything, well, if you reach me there. Inbox me, and then we can take it further. If you want to ask any questions, I always consult people through my Instagram and things like that. Whether it's you know about personal statements, um, MCAT, or anything else, you know, whatever you want to inquire from me, I'm always available. I can always put my stuff down and give you time. Um, but other than that, thank you so much, Cindy, for interviewing me. Of course. I hope whoever is listening to this today finds it informative. You know. Um, I'm excited about what's gonna happen for Cindy and her you know, network and things like that. It's very, it's a great thing to do, for, especially for us young, upcoming people, especially in this area of Dallas, Texas. Um, so thank you, Cindy. Anytime, and I'll definitely leave his information in the bio. Follow me on my Twitter, Instagram, and Snapchat. I'll leave those in the bio as well. And thanks, guys, for watching. Bye, gems. Thank you.